My name is Akanksha Apadhyay and I am your English instructor. In today's class, we will solve the reading portion of Unit 4, which is reporting commands. Now let's begin. In today's class, we will read the memories of the writer's visit to France and the topic of the reading is also memories of my visit to France. This morning, the city of Paris looks slightly fuming, the sky is overcast and it is drizzling too, but it does no harm to me. I have decided to go out for a visit or an observation tour. I had asked Nirmal Bhai for a list of museums in the vicinity of Paris yesterday. He brought me some vouchers with the names and addresses and street maps of Paris Museum in the evening. Paris has more museums than temples and gods in Kathmandu, he says. I am new to Paris, staying here for only one week. I hope these maps and vouchers will show me Paris metro zones and guide me to some museums today. Last week, Nirmal Bhai showed me Pompidou Center, a complex building of high-tech structure. This visit has emboldened me to explore further. I guess I can cover a maximum of two museums today. It means just giving a cursory glance. This is my plan. They say Cezanne is quite far away. Paul Cezanne, the post-impersonist painter, may be in the outskirts. I cannot visit him all alone and cannot cover two museums in a day, so I chose to visit a museum nearby in the heart of the city. Likewise, Brakew is far. Duchamp is farther away. So I have decided, as per Nirmal's suggestion, to start with Rodin's. Maybe I will go to Monet's next. People know I am never a painter, nor a sculptor, nor a connoisseur of art, or professional, but then the world knows that my interest in the lives of great artists and their lasting works is growing deeper. So whenever I go, I prefer to visit art museums first of all. In Russia, in Greece, in England, in America, I did so. I move merely a dilettante, however, with a deep sense of awe and reverence. I have no words to express how I feel upon seeing Mona Lisa in Louvre yesterday. I must say why my interest in this is growing gradually in this way. Two decades ago, I was entrusted an academy project titled Introduction to Literary Trends and Movements in which I had to present a glimpse of literary trends and movements of the world. Most literary movements developed from the Western movements of art and philosophy. They are entrenched firmly. Therefore, I studied and wrote briefly on new trends of art such as Impressionism, Expressionism, Symbolism, Cubism, Dadaism, Surrealism and their relationship with literature. I had used secondary sources to write about them. Later on, I visited the modern state of London to write on postmodernism. Most new thoughts originated in France. Most of them came to literature through art. They went to other literatures from France. Later on, when I studied the great works of Lain Singh Bangdale, his memories and travels and journals, I was moved. Everybody will be moved to read him. His Muluk Bahirama and Magnum Obs. Have you read this or his Spain Kosamjana or his Rome Kokanda Ra Paris Kofoul? He spent 12 years in Paris and studied fine arts in those difficult days. He had to spend 42 days traveling by ship from Calcutta to London. Every young heart will be moved to read those great love letters exchanged between Bangdale and his beloved Manu. Muluk Bahirama presents 500 pages of a rare collection of love letters exchanged between Lansing and his consort. There is wisdom, experience, hope and sadness. His desire for great art and great literature is indomitable. I don't recommend any other book to an avid reader like you more than this. Muluk Bahirama. This book proves that he had gained an incomparable height and success in Nepali art. Mostly, it is in the form of a daily diary. On his regular entry of 17th of August 1952, one year before I was born, he wrote these lines from Paris. I visited Musée d'Art Modern, Museum of Modern Art, today. I had an opportunity to look at the paintings of all the artists of France, living and dead, together. The paintings of Braque and Pisacco moved me exceedingly. I came across many artists who gave me 
I came across many artists who have imitated the form of George Seurat and styles of Cézanne and Gauguin, but I could not see here the paintings of Gauguin, Van Gogh, Cézanne, Renoir. Probably they are upstairs. I will come see them other day. Nirmal Bhai had described my way to two museums, Rodin's and Monet's. I set out all alone for the first time in the mega city of Paris. I had to enter the metro station, deep down below, buy tickets from the vending machine. Nobody will speak in English to me if I get lost, perhaps because they speak French. But for me, everything is so strange and unknown. I must have spent innumerable days and nights in learning France since SLC. We had a map of France. We had history of France. The French Revolution, Napoleon Bonaparte, First and Second World Wars, the existentialists. It is an endless story. Lainsin's writing produces a living France. Even B.P. Koirala has detailed his brief journey of France in his book Hitler and the Jews. I have known great people and the land, and I feel the French people too must know me. But when I think deeply, I know nobody knows me. I am alone, and I wonder about the consequences if I take the wrong line. Then I mustered up the courage to travel along the underground tubes alone. Nirmal had brought me tickets and shown routes. I entered the underground world near Paris, North Station, and traveled for about 30 minutes. It was claustrophobic. The crowd was so huge and shifting all the time. At last, I got out of the tube near Vernon. Then I ascended to surface of the earth, as if from nowhere, by climbing the escalator. I reached a broad street where vehicles were flying swiftly. I came to a different air, an open space, and I no more feel suffocated. I didn't know which direction I was supposed to follow, so I asked a passerby, Excuse me, can you show me the way to Musée Rodin, please? He did not speak, just pointed towards the direction with his white fingers. Perhaps he was telling me the direction without any words. Most French, like the Chinese, they say do not speak in English, though they know it or love to speak in their mother tongue. He spoke in French, politely, of course. I could only guess what he said. I thanked him, though he had gone a bit further ahead, and I continued my pace. This morning is damp and the road is wet. The sky is overcast. I walked on with an umbrella on my head. The road is bored, its sidewalks lonely and desolate. These are shaded by tall trees like poplars. There were some maples too. The leaves of maple and different exotic trees along the boulevard shine, uh, shine yellow like a flower. They keep falling all the time in early autumn. Soft paper like dry leaves have made the street carpet of different colors. Some were swept by rainwater, waiting to be swept in the manholes. Having walked for about five minutes, I again asked a slim lady walking towards me, tick-tocking her pointed soles. Excuse me, how far may be the Musée Rodin, please? She also pointed towards the same direction and moved ahead. She spoke no words. There are people, but they don't know me. Neither do I, except to know any of them. A total stranger, a bit scared. I am walking, and I felt a bit lonely today and helpless. After a hundred steps, I came to a sharp bend like a dead end, and across this stood a yellowish cream-colored building, at the entrance of which I could read, Muse Rodin. I entered the building, and as instructed by the curator, I bought a ticket and hired a special hand machine that will play the recorded voice to explain me everything in English. As I passed the administrative building, I came across a beautiful garden. It was full of pointed shapes of fir and pine trees, giving the best proof of French topiary. Far away stood other trees like walnut, juniper, and, and yew. Birds chirped from the top. Among the tuperi arch stood a huge black bust, on top of which lay a dropping figure of Rodin. Not Rodin himself, but a magnificent sculpture of him. It is commonly known as Rodin's thinking man. The thinking man squatted on a large and tall marble slab, in half-bent posture and pensive mood. This is one of the masterpieces in modern art, an incomparable work. Rodin's pensive mood is remarkable. Three years ago, I had visited a smaller museum in Baltimore. Sewa had joined me from Illinois. 
In that very small museum, Rodin's copy, too, was quite small. Rodin's little thinker in Baltimore was a black metal work, just a replica. I remember writing an article which reminds us of our visit to Baltimore and Van Gogh's irises. It got published in Antaturisti, edited by Jyoti Komire of the U.S. Since I heard of the name of Rodin as one of the greatest sculptors of 20th century, I had always desired to see him, that is, his work or his museum. The brochure distributed at Metro Station suggests, if you are going to spend four days in Paris, please visit Rodin Museum on the very first day. Enter the sculpture garden premises and go close to the thinker and feel or experience the weight of the pensive mood he has. On that noon, it was drizzling and I tried to feel the pensive mood Rodin sculpted in his immortal art. At that moment, my mood also turned like his. This was a long read about the memories of the writer of his visit to Paris. And he explains every bit of it about how he went there, who suggested him places, and who helped him throughout his visit. Also, he mentions about what he did and his interests in art. Now we have few exercises, but it's easy because we need to read few paragraphs and then answer and then again go and read other paragraphs to answer other exercises. So first we will keep in our minds about paragraph 1, 2 and 3 and then state whether the sentences are true or false. The first statement is, Paul Cezanne is an impersonist painter. Now in our text we have, in the third paragraph, they say Sazen is quite far away. Paul Sazen, the post-impersonist painter, may be in the outskirts. So Paul's, Paul Sazen is a post-impersonist painter. So we say this is false. Next we have the author plans to give a cursory cleanse. And in the same paragraph we read, it means just giving a cursory cleanse. This is my plan. So yes, this is true. Next we have, he was assigned an academy project entitled Introduction to Literary Trends and Movements. This is true as well. In our fourth paragraph we have, in the first sentence, two decades ago I was entrusted an academy project titled Introduction to Literary Trends and Movements. Next we have, the author has no words to impress, to express how he felt upon seeing the Mona Lisa in Rodin. So again in the fourth paragraph, he says, I have no words to express how I felt upon seeing Mona Lisa. So this is true again. Next we have, Paris has as many museums as temples in Kathmandu. So this is false because it's not as many museums as temples in Kathmandu, but it's more than what we have in Kathmandu. So in the first paragraph of the text, we have, Paris has more museums than temples and gods in Kathmandu. So this statement would be true if we had no as in the sentence. So if we had Paris has many museums as temples in Kathmandu, that would mean that the number of museums is more. But because we have as many museums as temples in Kathmandu, so this is false because it's not equal, but the museums in Paris is greater in number. The author decided to visit Monet's museum on the first day of his tour. So this is true. In the second paragraph, last line, he says, So I have decided, as per Nirmal's suggestion, to start with Rodin's. Maybe I will go to Monet's next. So he was preparing for two museums, and after Rodin's, he was planning to visit Monet's on the very first day. Next, we will read paragraphs 4, 5, 6, 7, and then choose the correct ending for the statement from the box. So we will have five statements and then five endings in the last and we need to choose it in order to match them. So the first sentence is, in his academy project, the author had to present and the options we need to choose from the endings. So the first one is art. So art is not the correct one for this because in the fourth paragraph we have two decades ago I was entrusted in an academy project titled Introduction to Literary Trends and Movements, in which I had to present a glimpse of literary trends and movements of the world. So we have it in the third option, a glimpse of literary trends and movements of the world. So in his academy project, 
he had to present the third in our option, which is a glimpse of literary trends and movements of the world. Next we have, the author wrote about new trends of art and their relationship with literature. We need to have the correct ending for it. So the correct one is using secondary sources of information. So in the same paragraph, the writer writes, I studied and wrote briefly on new trends of art. I had used secondary sources to write about them. So we have the second option as the correct ending for this statement. Next we have, according to the author, most of the literature originated from its art. We have that in the text again. So it reads, most literary movements develop from the Western movements of art and philosophy. Next we have, Bangdel's Muluk Bahira Ma is, the correct option is for, that's, a magnum, a magnum opus. In the fifth paragraph, it reads, I was moved, everybody will be moved to read him, his Muluk Bahira Ma, a magnum opus. And finally, the last one is, in Musée d'Art, one can, it's the fifth option, that's the only one left here, in Musée d'Art, one can look at the paintings of Braque and Picasso. And we had it in our text as well. Next, we have another simple exercise. We need to complete the sentences using correct option. The first question is, the author visited the museum, and there are four options. We need to choose one among four with Nirmal. So this is not true because we know that Nirmal just suggested him and described his way to the two museums, so it cannot be normal. The second option is alone, and we have alone as the answer, because it cannot be a French woman with whom the author visited the museum, neither can be Napoleon Bonaparte. And in the text we have, Nirmal Bhai had described my way to two museums, Rodin's and Monet. I set out all alone, so the correct option is alone. So the next statement is, the author had to buy tickets, the options are, with Nirmal. So this cannot be true. He cannot buy, he, the author must not have to buy tickets with Nirmal from the metro station. So you wouldn't buy tickets from the metro station. From a vending machine, probably this is the true, this is the correct option. And with the French woman, this cannot be true either. And in our text we have, I had to enter the metro station deep down below buy tickets from the vending machine. So a vending machine is used to buy tickets. So the third statement is, if you get lost in France, one, nobody asks you in English. So it is true that nobody asks you in English. It might be true that nobody asks you in English because in our text we have read the experience about the author that people didn't respond by words. So they just pointed when he asked for directions and hence mostly people wouldn't ask you in English according to the text. Everyone asks you in English, this cannot be true. Nobody cares about you, so this is not true either. And if you get lost in France, if nobody cares about you, that really does not match with what we are looking for, the answer we're looking for. So if you get lost in France, you have to use a map. So this can be true, and this should be done if you're lost in France. So we consider the fourth option to be the best alternative for completing the sentence. Next we have Hitler and Jews was written by, so in our text we have this mentioned that it was written by B.P. Koirala, so it is a correct option. Next we have the author traveled for 30 minutes. The author traveled for 30 minutes from Paris North Station to 1. Baltimore, 2. Rodin Museum, 3. Vernon, and 4. Monet Museum. So in the text we have, I entered the underground world near Paris North Station and traveled for about 30 minutes. It was claustrophobic and crowd was so huge and shifting all the time. At last, I got out of the tube near Vernon. So we have Vernon as the correct answer. And for this section, we have one last question left. So the final one is, the author was afraid of confined spaces, so he felt suffocated while visiting Musée Rodion. So this is true, traveling underground, so it's all about suffocation. It's all about suffocations while he was towards visiting Muse, 
Musée Rodding while he was traveling underground and especially climbing the escalators. So we have all three options correct. So we take the fourth one, all of the above. Now we have one last exercise left. That's to answer the questions. So the first one is, the first question is, what was the weather like? The answer is, he says the morning is damp and the road is wet. So it was drizzling and that's why it was wet. The weather was damp and it was drizzling leading to a wet road. The next question is, why did the author feel lonely and helpless? So the answer is, the author felt lonely and helpless because he knows no one there. The author felt lonely and helpless because he knows no one there and people don't know him either. Also, he was scared and walking alone. And that's why he was afraid and that's why he was lonely and helpless. The next question is, why did the author buy a hand machine? In the 12th paragraph, we have, I bought a ticket and hired a special hand machine that will play the recorded voice to explain me everything in English. So the answer is... So the author got a hand machine for himself to play the recorded voice to explain him things in English. The next question is... When had the author visited museum in Baltimore? So in the text he writes that he visited there three years ago. So the answer is... The author visited the museum in Baltimore three years ago. The next question is, where was the replica of Rodin's Thinking Man? So the replica of Rodin's Thinking Man was in Baltimore. So the replica was in the small museum in Baltimore. Now we have a question that asks us for a descriptive answer. That is, what was the garden like? And for your homework, we will have similar kind of questions today. So in the 12th paragraph, the writer writes about the garden. He says, as I passed the administrative building, I came across a beautiful garden. It was full of pointed shapes of fir and pine trees, giving the best proof of French topiary. Far away stood other trees like walnut, juniper, and yew. So this is how he explains about the garden. So the answer reads, the garden was the best proof of French topiary topiary as it was full of pointed shapes of fir and pine trees also there were trees like walnut juniper and yew it was beautiful so this is how i could explain the garden about the garden and write few sentences about it after reading the author's view on the garden so for your homework we have similar questions so these are the two questions for your homework the first one is to describe the road as the author described it, the answer is in the 11th paragraph and you can simply paraphrase it and write it down. And the second question is, describe Rodin's thinking man in few sentences. So this is in the second last paragraph of our reading text. And again, you can rephrase it, paraphrase it and write the answer as we describe the garden in our classwork today. This is all for today's class. If you have any questions, any suggestions or anything that you wish to share with us, please feel free to write to us at learning at Thanks for watching.